Welcome everyone. Can you hear me okay? Just a thumbs up from someone would be great. Great, thank you, Tapasya. So welcome to Tuesday night evening talk. And I'm so glad you came to the new time of 6.30. My name is Elizabeth Padilla and I'm your host. And tonight we have uh, Vinod Mungopada speaking about the topic of the power within. This is a, you could say a big topic, but it starts from someplace very small. And so we have Vinod sharing with us on this topic. And he's been a Raj Yogi meditator for the last four years. He's also quite accomplished in the field of medicine, the healing arts. So not only uh, physically, but he also spiritually has that ability of being all the roles needed, a motherly and fatherly, since Father's Day is coming up and he is a father, which is a very, um, a, a very important role in the world today. And He's also worked as a surgeon, an, anesthesi an anesthesiologist, and is now working in pain management in the Central Valley. Uh, so welcome, Brother Vinod. Thank you for yeah. joining me. Uh, today's topic is power within. Um, it's very important to learn about this because this is uh, one subject we are talking about ourselves. It's not something that's outside of us, <clears throat> power within. Uh, before, uh, we, before I talk about the main uh, segment of this, I want uh, to highlight uh, the importance of knowing what is inside and what is outside, what is within, what is outside. <clears throat> um, the, uh, the outside powers, uh, to give one example of an outside power is money power. And that's very, very easily understood uh, that, uh, you know, money, is a power uh, that is there, but sometimes uh, we don't have it. Uh, money is not always uh, a useful uh, in all situations. So it is something outside. Um, some other examples would be uh, muscle power, you know, physical power. I have a physical strength. And uh, that also can be considered as an outside power because uh, the difference between outside and inside is inside is always there within and it does not get depleted and uh, it does not die out. It's ageless. So it is immortal, it is imperishable, and it's ageless, ageless. So these are the characteristics of inner powers. And so with that definition, uh, if I say um, the power of my position, that's considered as outside because uh, it, is, uh, it is not immortal. I, I can be holding a, a good position today, but uh, tomorrow I may not be. And so that's not always be there with me. And it's very, very important to know this distinction because the inner power is something uh, that is deep within ourself, the soul. And uh, it is always there. Um, so what are these inner powers? What are, by that definition, what are these inner powers? The power of peace is our inner power. 
power of love, power of love, purity, happiness, bliss, knowledge, or wisdom, and the classic eight powers. These are our inner powers. <clears throat> the classic eight powers. I will um, I will mention that as a separate uh, uh, section of this talk. But to come to those uh, other six powers, these are our inner core values of of I uh, of we the soul. <clears throat> they are never away from us. They're always there within. <clears throat> That's one distinction. I can fall sick and uh, <clears throat> I can lose the, the power of position, power of money, power of muscle, but I cannot lose the power of the peace that I have, even if I am sick. <clears throat> I cannot lose that power in any situation. I can be facing something difficult, I can still have my power of peace. And so, Similarly, the power of um, happiness, for example, I can always have that power in all uh, conditions. I may be uh, going through some painful incident, but still I have this inner happiness that, uh, that creates an environment of uh, happiness within and peace and uh, counter that painful situation outside. Versus if I don't have that inner power of, of happiness, for example, then I feel the pain that is outside. But with this power, I can feel the peace, I can feel the happiness and so on and so forth. So that's the biggest distinction to know outside and inside. <clears throat> Uh, so these are our core values, um, and uh, they're always there. And uh, the, the problem is when uh, we think that these powers are outside, we think that the peace is outside, we think that the happiness is outside. So let me give you one example. Um, if I buy a new car or something that I like, then uh, I feel happy. So uh, what actually happens is uh, uh, my mind and my intellect, both, they get aligned with that uh, new object that I have or the car that I bought. And together, they stimulate my sunscar of happiness that is deep within me. So the three things gets aligned, my mind, my intellect, and my sanska. And the, uh, the stimulus is outside. The object is outside the car. And I feel happy that I got a new car. But the same car, when it gets old, then I lose this happiness. And why is that? Because my mind uh, starts to think that this is an old car. My intellect now is focused on another car or something else. So there's a disconnect between my mind, my intellect, and the sun scar of happiness is now dormant, it's not stimulated anymore from that stimulus. So that proves that the happiness is not in the car, but it's within me. It is stimulated by what's outside and my sanskar of happiness is awakened. Everything that we see in this world is like that, which gives you a temporary happiness or temporary a feeling of powerfulness, power, or temporary peace. Everything in this world, physical world, anything that gets old, will give you a transient experience of happiness, peace, power. It will not create a, a permanent or long lasting happiness and peace that we look for 
Our soul always is looking for a permanent. That's why we keep searching here and there. Uh, so how do we get to that permanent happiness, permanent peace and power, is if I connect my intellect to what is truth, to what is permanent, my intellect, then my mind joins that intellect and my sanskar of happiness, peace or power gets stimulated forever, permanently. Very important. So I'm focused to a permanent a being. I'm focused to a truth. And so my sanskar of happiness is stimulated. So I want to show one diagram to, uh, uh, to show this. And the same sequence happens when I connect uh, with something disturbing outside, my sanskar of anger can, can get stimulated. And these are superficial sanskars. So uh, the, the negative, negativity can also be stimulated by something from outside, but never from within, because within is totally pure environment. And so I will share that uh, one uh, picture. Share the screen. Okay, so this is our topic. And we, we talked about what is inside. Uh, it does not get depleted, does not get destroyed, and it is inside, not outside. Ageless, immortal, imperishable. And this is a diagram. <clears throat> this is us. And uh, <clears throat> this is the mind, this is the mountain that we carry with us. This is subtle. Uh, and this is the mind. That's our intellect, the eye of the intellect. And these are the sanskars. These are our true sanskars. And these are our, the most, more recent sanskars, sanskars of the 63 births. Or you can say the negative sanskars and true sanskars. True self. This is our true self right here. And I, I put a seven dots because these are the seven uh, powers that we have. Love, peace, power, purity, happiness, and all that knowledge. And, and then that's a supreme soul. So this is our world right here. Underneath that curve is our physical world. Anything that happens here, that has nothing, that, that, uh, is related to what is here in the physical world. And above this, anything is there. It is all uh, immortal and pure and permanent outside here. So normally when as a uh, unrealized soul, when we live in this world, we are living here. And so we think that I am this body, I'm interact interacting with this another body here. And so I see myself as how the outside world is. And I connect with this person, I feel something, and that something is always temporary, not permanent, because it's not coming from something higher. And so if I focus with my intellect here instead of here, and I look at myself as a soul, with, with the powers, then I can see the whole picture and I can feel that on a temp permanent basis, that power. So that diagram I just put. And that Supreme Soul, when, when I can see myself here, I can also connect with the Supreme Soul easily. So I can derive all the powers from Supreme Soul 
and I can um, uh, bring these powers into the physical world here to interact uh, with peace and uh, uh, happiness. So that, and then uh, these are the outside versus inside powers, money, muscle, matter, position, possessions, relations, intelligence. Even the intelligence, I, I classified as, as, as an outside power because my intelligence is not permanent. I can be intelligent uh, person in my field of uh, what I study, but then uh, next birth, it's gone. I have to start ABC again. It is different than intellect. It is different than the wisdom that we uh, have we carry in our uh, within us the soul the wisdom it it is permanent we carry that always and that's uh, one of these the knowledge right and uh, the classic eight powers are the power of the these are the powers and then we know all about that these powers are uh, 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 specified uh, separately as a powers because we use them to counter or uh, deal with what is called as a Maya. Maya is the five vices, or uh, a which is a characteristic of the physical world here. We, the soul, are separate from the body here. But when we come in interaction, uh, with the body and we uh, live here, we necessarily have to use uh, those uh, characteristics that the physical world has. And we come under the effect of those. And these are called as Maya. Uh, when it is time for us to, um, to go into a new cycle or to go into the soul world, that's the time we need these powers uh, so that we can become soul again and then come uh, to transform the, and live into the new world. And so these are separately uh, given uh, powers. And we'll talk about that. And I have uh, put two columns here that uh, um, each power has uh, many um, associated virtues. And uh, I just written one or two here, but then there are many others. Like for example, the power to face needs, uh, we need to have courage and determination. So they go hand in hand. The power to face, uh, I, so all these are supporting uh, virtues that, uh, so when, when we talk about a power here, we're talking about many virtues that, uh, that we use to utilize that power. And similarly, the other, uh, the powers that we have, uh, the, the inner power, these, the peace, love, purity, they are, they are also uh, uh, really powers and they are also supported by many virtues, like love uh, goes on with the compassion, care, freedom, and so on. So we'll, we'll learn about this. So. Uh, that was one important point I wanted to uh, state about uh, the inside and outside difference between inside and outside. Okay, so I'm going to unshare <clears throat> and uh, talk about the, the core values of the soul and how they are power. We'll talk about that. And so first is uh, peace. And so what is peace? What is peace? It is, uh, when, we, when we say peace in the physical sense, we mean silence outside. So there's no noise and we call it, okay, it's, it's peaceful. But peace spiritually means silence of many things. So one is silence of the mind. My mind is silent. And there are thoughts in the mind. So my thoughts are less 
the negative thoughts are not there. The waste thoughts are minimum and some positive thoughts are there. That's the silence of the mind. Then the silence of the heart, which is also a part of the, which I, I call it a part of the mind, the silence of the heart, the, the part of the mind that feels. That also I need to be silent. When I say uh, I'm peace, I'm in peace. So silent um, heart is important component there. Uh, meaning I have many uh, emotions in my heart, a past trauma or some negative uh, emotions, feeling of low anger, jealousy, these are there. So when they are silent and uh, all the negative emotions are not there, that would be called as peace <clears throat> and only positive. So when all negatives are gone, what remains is the happiness. And so only happy feeling is there and all negative emotions are not there. Thirdly, silence of my intellect. Now, intellect is the one that see, discern, judge, and focus on a distance goal or set a, a limit in which the mind will go. Uh, so how I can silence my intellect? I can, my intellect is looking at something and it can look at some other thing. So that looking here and there, when that stops, it's a silent. So in Hindi, it's called as a chanchal buddhi or, uh, or a monkey in intellect. The intellect that is not stable, just it shifts the goal here every now and then. <clears throat> so when that shifting of the goal stops and the, and the intellect is focused onto uh, some elevated goal, that would be called as a silence. So that's a third component, mind, heart, intellect. Then my attitude should be clean. There should not be, in, there should not be any negativity inside my attitude. Only intoxication of love, for example, would be called as silence. So these many components combined together creates that peace and that peace uh, is we, the peace. Um, <clears throat> so how, how does that peace is equal to power? How, uh, how is a peace uh, considered as a power? When I'm a peaceful, uh, my thoughts are minimum and they are powerful thoughts. I have very, uh, and I'm very close to my original self. I can easily connect with the Supreme Being and I can connect with my true be uh, nature. And thus I bring the power in my presence and outside. That's why it is powerful. I can connect with me and I can connect with the Supreme very easily with that peace. Secondly, when I, when I have peace, I can, I can easily see what's going on outside. I can discern very easily. I can, I can peer through um, anybody's uh, body into their soul as to what's happening because I don't have any impurity so my vision can peer. Similarly, I can, I can receive the signals from outside very easily. And thus the communication is very fast and high level. So I can easily become powerful. I can manage uh, what I want to do. I can project out what um, I want to do and become very successful. So that is why it is a power. Thirdly, because there are no negativity, there's, uh, the mind is not running, the heart is not running, everything is peaceful. 
I don't waste any energy. Otherwise, every thought that I create, it takes a lot of energy. So if I create 60 thoughts a minute, uh, all of them create, uh, take uh, energy. It could be positive or negative, but they all take uh, energy and I get uh, depleted if I keep uh, using the energy into the waste and unnecessary thoughts. So that's why the peace is uh, power because I conserve my energy and I remain strong. Um, I can bring the peace in my environment uh, with my peace. And so that, that's why we call it the peace as a power. <clears throat> Next is love. Uh, so how is the love a power? Um, you know, love is very, uh, has been defined many ways, but I will describe what I think <clears throat> the, by, by its characteristic. The characteristic no, uh, number one of love is it is a transformative power. It transforms. When I love somebody, I can transform that another person, vice versa. When somebody loves me, I change, I transform. And uh, this transformation occurs because the uh, love, it comes from my high elevated place and it changes my attitude. So love first transforms my attitude and then it can transform outside. So it is transformative power because it transforms my attitude. Then my vision and my uh, activities are all loveful. Uh, next is uh, the love, it's a fulfilling, it's filling. So when I love, uh, for example, when I love, uh, I feel, I feel the, the fullness, I'm content. When, I, when I'm in love with God, I am content with his love and I can become full. I go into the mode of giving this love to outside. I look at the uh, nature with love. I interact with the other souls with love when I'm full of love. And, and so it is empowering because I give that love of the Supreme to others, to the environment. And so that's the, another aspect of that is when I give love to, every time I give love to another person, I receive blessing from that person. And I also receive blessing from the Supreme uh, Soul from whom I uh, receive that love. So I get double, double blessing. Blessing from the soul outside, blessing from the Supreme Soul, because I'm doing an act in his service. So that is why it is empowering when I receive uh, blessing from uh, everything that I do, I feel more stronger, I become more stronger. Um, Love is a freedom. Um, there are the love that is we um, in a common uh, language when we uh, speak about love, that I would classify as love with attachment and the, the love with this, the spiritual love would be the love without the attachment. So the love that we, we exercise in this world that will be called as a love with attachment uh, for the lack of the another word. I don't want to say that love has a different meaning, but the love with attachment and the love without the attachment. Uh, what's the difference? When, when there is a love with, without the attachment, I'm free. I'm not attached. So I'm in love with the Supreme uh, so I'm totally free and that freedom is empowering because I can move. I'm not bound by 
anything. I'm free, that freedom. Versus love with my brothers, with the souls here, there's a little bit attachment. And anytime I'm attached with another person and love them, whatever happens to them, it affects me. So if, if I love my father, if something happens to me, it will negatively affect me. So I, I, get, I get bound by that love and I become less powerful. I feel I become more vulnerable. That love is always, that love always carries that characteristic. That it is not, it is a binding. It is not freeing. The only love that is, uh, that frees you totally is the love with the Supreme Soul. And the next closest would be the love with the mother. So that is why freedom that comes along with the love is empowering. And then uh, love protects you. When, uh, when I'm loved by someone, I feel protected by that love in all conditions, all situations. Uh, next is uh, purity. Purity as a power. How is purity a power? Uh, so first let us understand what is purity. Purity is something uh, in a very simple words I would describe as, as a, a state of being, a state of un unmixed with anything. When I am not mixed with anything else, I am original me, I would call that as a purity. So unmixed with anything. Um, and as a pure soul, what are the things that I'm mixed with and become pure, impure? That I need to know. So as a pure soul, I am a peaceful, loveful, happy being. But as a human being, I carry that impurity or alloy. And that alloy, and what are the things that I, I, uh, I am mixed with? So number one, um, the, uh, I am this body. That's the first impurity. I'm this body. So there's a body consciousness. And, uh, and what happens is why it is impure because, uh, and why it is less powerful than the pure, uh, my pure stage is because when I become a body, I adopt the limitations of that body. I can only run 40 miles an hour max, but as a soul, I can go millions of miles in a second. So, and there are many examples can be given, but body consciousness puts you into limitations. You can do only so much. Soul consciousness, you become unlimited. There's no limit. Next uh, impurity is uh, <clears throat> impurity of the role, role consciousness. I am so-and-so. I belong to a so and so group. And that puts a limit in me, uh, in my ability. For example, if I am a, I'm a girl, for example, I'm a woman, then I put limitations on myself automatically. <clears throat> that I cannot do this, I can only do housework, I can only do cleaning, I can't hold a high position in any company. Those limitations come. Of course, now you know it's different, but in general, that is the that is how we think. But uh, that role is gone. 
then I am a soul, then I am I'm a limitless. I can do anything that I want. Uh, and another example could be, I, am, I belong to so-and-so group, then anything else other than group is not me. What goodness the other group has, I completely neglect that. So I put limitations on me. <clears throat> the third limitation or impurity is the time consciousness that I put on myself, <clears throat> that I have only this much time uh, when I come into this physical world, that limitation automatically comes inside that I have this much time. I have only one year to finish this task. I have only a short time to you know, do this work. But as a soul, I have all the time in the world. There is no limit that there's time is not a factor for me at all. I'm endless. So see how the purity and impurity works. Uh, and purity, we, uh, it has a negative connotation, but purity is something that is, uh, that is a rule in this physical world. And we talk about purity and impurity at the time of the transformation only. All other, all other times, it is a part of this world. So I should, we should not bear a negative attitude to what is called purity. Now, I want to mention here the celibacy as a part, uh, just uh, want to touch base because some may have question about that. It is uh, also a part of being, um, uh, being pure because uh, purity means you uh, a soul conscious, a pure soul conscious stage. To go to the soul conscious mm -hmm. stage, we have to be very away from the body consciousness. And so thus the celibacy is, pulls you down into the body consciousness. And so it is uh, considered as impurity. And so the, uh, the main thing is purity is power because there is, there is no limitation. So when you are pure, you become unlimited. That's why it's power. Uh, you exercise an unquestionable authority when you are when you are pure. Uh, the three examples that comes to my mind are a, a flower, a beautiful flower, a young child, a baby, and a holy man. What is common in these three? The most common, the, the common thing in, in all three is, uh, is a purity. Because they are pure down to their uh, core, they attract the masses, number one. They don't call out to others, but others get attracted to them. Number two, the... Um, we would do anything to protect them. We would do anything to get connected with them. And uh, uh, that's, that's how the, uh, the power of the purity works. A beautiful flower just attracts everybody because it's so pure. Next is happiness. Um, happiness is a very positive uh, feeling. And uh, by it being so positive, it's a pure positivity. Happiness means absent of absence of the all the uh, negative emotions. That's what that is. And when where there is happiness, there is a zeal and enthusiasm. So if I am happy doing my work, I have zeal and enthusiasm to finish it. I can easily finish that task. So there's a power. It's a powerful stage of, of uh, being happiness. And when I'm happy, I'm light. I can do anything so easily without any burden. <clears throat> and I can easily create an harmony between I, the soul, and the matter outside when, I, with, when I'm happy. 
And so it these uh, the happiness brings ease into my activity and uh, it removes the negativity and it empowers my actions. And there may be more, many more um, uh, examples, but this, this is the main thing that comes to my mind about happiness. Now, uh, next is a stage of bliss. That is uh, our core character characteristic of us, the souls, the bliss. Uh, bliss is a stage, in Hindi it's called Ananda. Ananda, the stage of uh, balance. Uh, it's, a, it's a constant pleasant stage, which is not shaken by anything, out, anything of this world. It is not moved by praise or criticism. When I'm in a stage of bliss, I'm not affected by praise or criticism from outside. I'm not affected by hate or cold from outside. I'm not affected by profit or loss. And I'm not affected by happiness or sorrow. Happiness or sorrow, I'm not affected by that. Uh, the, that is a stage of bliss where I am constantly pleasant in my blissful stage. In, in the path of devotion, they show the picture of uh, uh, Vishnu uh, sleeping with a smiling face on the snake, a poisonous snake in the ocean called uh, in an ocean. So, but that stage to depict the blissful stage that, that is uh, depicted like that in the path of devotion. Meaning, I'm not affected by any poisonous uh, um, poisonous powers outside. I'm not affected by that. I can easily, somebody say something, I will not be, get affected. So that's the stage of the bliss. And uh, that bliss is very powerful because when I have uh, something and I lose that thing, and if I'm, in a, if I'm in a blissful stage, I remain constant. It does not, does not affect me. Um, and so any material uh, possessions that I have, I can easily and uh, uh, easily lose that without uh, getting disturbed too much. And that is a very uh, elevated type of virtue or power one can have to be able to do that. And uh, this balance comes from uh, from the stage of being soul conscious. So if I'm a soul conscious, then only this stage will come. Uh, if I'm in a body conscious stage, then it's very difficult to be able to feel that bliss. Uh, praise and defamation is very uh, an example. If somebody praises me, uh, I remain same. And somebody defames me, I remain the same. And this is a very important virtue that uh, we need to have when we are in the field of service, because there will be criticism, there will be uh, negative uh, comments. But if we get affected, if we get affected from outside, then we become, that is called as a powerless stage. So to have the power, we need to be so conscious in a stage where uh, nothing from outside effects because we are very close to, to ourselves and God. <clears throat> um, next is a knowledge or wisdom. And knowledge is power. We all know that very well. In this world also, whatever we study, uh, that knowledge is power, but temporary power. If I have a knowledge of uh, building something, then I have that knowledge, but it is temporary. Um, 
Now, there are many types of knowledge in this world. The knowledge about uh, studying something, the knowledge about making something, knowledge about cooking, and knowledge about doing some service. All these are there. But uh, unspecified knowledge, when we say knowledge without any um, specification, we mean the spiritual knowledge. And that spiritual knowledge has true power. Everything else is a skill. So I'm a doctor, so it's a skill, but the skill is not a power. I can lose that power next day if something happens to me. But the spiritual knowledge, it, I can't lose it because it's there, permanent. Like in the initial part of this talk, we talked about uh, what is permanent and what is, what is inside, what is outside. So the spiritual knowledge is power. And what is spiritual knowledge? Knowledge about who I am, knowledge about who do I belong to, knowledge about <clears throat> where did I come from and what I have to do, where am I going? That's all is spiritual knowledge. So basically knowledge about soul, supreme soul and my cycle, my life cycle, my journey. Knowing about these is the knowledge is, and, and that knowledge is power. And so how is it a power? How does it make me powerful if I know I'm a soul? How does it make me powerful if I know that I'm a traveler, I'm a soul who is traveling in this long cycle of my journey? How does it help? First thing, when I am a soul, then I have all the powers that are there within me, fully manifested. That means when I'm a soul, I'm peaceful being, totally peaceful being, nothing will disturb me, nothing from outside. So that powerful stage I can have with that realization that I am a soul. Secondly, who do I belong to? If I belong to um, a, a very important person, I become automatically have that feel powerful. A very highly influential person, person if, I, if I'm related to that, I become very powerful in this world. But if I become related to the Supreme Soul, then how much, how much powerful I can become? Just imagine. If I call the Supreme Father, my father, and if, I, if he is calling me as a child, how much powerful I am? How much important I become? So that's a very powerful stage just knowing who is my father. Thirdly, if I know that I am a soul who is traveling this long journey, uh, which is totally different than the journey of the body. Body's journey starts with the birth and ends with the death. The soul's journey is much longer than that. It does not end after the death of the body. It continues on. And so, how does it make me powerful knowing that I am a traveler? It makes me, uh, it, may, it enables me to see the past, present, and future. It makes me what is called the Trikal Darshi. I can see past, present, future in the right perspective. Uh, when I become Trikal Darshi, I can easily discern what is right, what is wrong. And uh, by that discernment power, I can understand that if something uh, that is not right, I can understand that this is only temporary. And so all the negativity that happens in this life 
it does not affect me that much because I have a much longer life cycle. And I have been through many uh, happy phases of my life. So if I have 99% of happiness and 1% unhappiness, why am I focusing on 1% unhappiness? So that gives me that advantage of just knowing that I'm a soul who is traveling. That's it. So that's why it is empowering. <clears throat> and the next is the eight powers, the, the, uh, the classic eight powers. And uh, I mentioned before that uh, these are required to conquer the, the Maya. <clears throat> and Maya means the, the five vices and their children. <clears throat> so five vices of <clears throat> lust, anger, greed, attachment, ego, and uh, two children of each. <clears throat> um, and first of all, the question is, why do we have to fight with them? And, uh, and how do you do that? And so the first one is, why do you have to fight the vices? Why do you have to fight uh, the attachment? I have affection for somebody, why do I have to fight that? So like uh, I mentioned before, when it is a time for world transformation, it becomes important. <clears throat> because uh, now is the time to transform. So now is the time to let go and let go of everything that belongs to the body and, and uh, become soul. And that is why it's important to, to let go of all those things that are associated with the body. And so that's why it's important now at this time. <clears throat> and uh, how do you conquer uh, these, uh, these eight powers are that, you know, we recently had a series of uh, eight power lectures by uh, our senior sister Usha Didi, and that was so very great. So I'm not going to go into details of those, but I'm going to touch base a few things of each. Uh, but uh, I want to uh, take one example of how I can use uh, these eight powers uh, to, to counter the anger, to, to conquer the anger, just a, as an example. And so uh, let's say I'm in, uh, I'm in uh, uh, contact, I'm in uh, company with another person who is getting uh, angry or getting in argument. He's, in, uh, he's getting into the mode of argument and uh, he could easily slip into the anger. Let's say that situation comes. So with my powerful stage, how do I uh, conquer that? How do I deal with that? So, First thing I discern, I understand as to, uh, though I use my power to discern. Power to discern means power to, find, uh, to know what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is not good. That's power to discern. So I understand that this person is getting into argument and there must be some real reason and there must be some hurt going on in this person. So with my understanding, I don't fall into the trap of getting dragged into that anger along with that person. That's one, that's the first thing. And, uh, and so I exercise my power to accommodate this person too, that I understand fine and accommodate this, uh, this soul. And then I decide to remain quiet. That's, uh, uh, I use my decision power that, okay, I understand it's like that and I, I need to remain quiet. So I exercise my decision power, decision power and I tolerate. 
And then I pack up my any negative thoughts and it's natural if somebody's shouting at you, it's natural for you to have uh, thoughts about this person, that why this person is not behaving good and all that, all that. But only I can watch my thought and I can put a powerful break to, to those waste thoughts. So application of the powerful break to my waste and negative thoughts is an exercise that I will use when I come into that situation. So apply a powerful break. Four, I will create, I will create a pure feeling and good wish for this person. So when I create a good wish and pure feeling, pure feeling means whatever's coming from outside within, I don't register that negativity and I only have pure feeling about that, that this is the soul who is hurting and this is Baba's child. That pure feeling is in me. That does not create any negativity in me. And secondly, I create a good, I create a good wish that I wish that this person will feel better in a minute. So create a good wish that one person. So that is steering away to safety or facing, um, working at the root cause for the, uh, that negativity that is coming from outside. So that's power to face. And then I can withdraw, I can withdraw inside and connect with the Supreme Soul and bring love of the Supreme Soul and radiate out unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And that heals, that love heals that other soul. So I use the power of introversion or power of withdrawal, power to withdraw. I use that. And I also, when I transform this other person's negativity, I use what is called the power of cooperation. So this is how we use all different powers and many situations, many combinations uh, of the powers can be used. So in this example, I put all uh, eight classic powers and, and uh, to depict how we use them. <clears throat> And then uh, there are some exercises that you can do uh, when you have time. And so how you could use the powers to overcome. Number one, ailment of the body. How am I going to overcome my illness? So that you can exercise on your own. Number two, my economical situation. If something happens in my, you know, money world, how do you, how do you use these powers to deal with that? Number three, stress in relations. Number four, work situation. You know, I have a boss who is not right, or I have a colleague who is always giving me a hard time. They are doing, putting more work for me. How do you deal with that? <clears throat> And, and the next is how I use these powers to manage environmental problem. For example, some disease, um, the COVID is happening. How am I going to uh, deal with that? Uh, you know, fire or earthquake or things like that. And num number next is how am I going to deal with the feeling of inferiority? If I feel inferior or if, if I feel weak inside, how am I going to use these powers to deal with that? And you can, the same way as I showed uh, with the power of anger, you can use that. You can just sit and contemplate and you can figure out how to do that. <clears throat> so that's the exercise for homework. Now I have a question for all of you. Uh, we went into some detail about all these powers, but I did not go into the details of the, uh, the eight powers, which I will if I have time. But before that, I want to cover one important topic. 
uh, and the topic is in the form of a question. With the knowledge that we heard, um, do you feel peaceful, loveful, pure, powerful, happy, knowledgeful, or blissful? And blissful, I should say. Do you feel like that? Do you feel peaceful, blissful, happy, powerful? Just think for half a minute and then we'll talk. So we have the knowledge, we heard the knowledge, but did you feel that peace in, inside? Did you feel that power? Did you feel that happiness? Shanti, thank you for the comment. Sashikan Bai. <clears throat> thank you. Um, my answer, I mean, I have, I have, I was, uh, I'm prepared for this lecture, so uh, I'm just saying this, but <clears throat> uh, I'm, if I was me a few years ago, then I, my answer would have been no. I don't feel anything. I did not feel powerful a few years ago before the knowledge. Even if I heard the knowledge and somebody speaking to me, I would have felt, no, I did not feel happy or powerful. But with the knowledge, yes, we can accept them and understand. But I pose this question to, uh, to highlight two important powers very important that we need. <clears throat> the first is called as a power of realization. I can have all the knowledge in the world, but if I have not realized, then, then that knowledge is just uh, information. It's not a power inside me, <clears throat> power of realization. And so the uh, very easy example of power of re realization is uh, fire when when you're when I'm when you're a little child you don't know what fire is and so you can even put your hand into the fire without knowing even if somebody says that it's not good to do that you would put your hand in the fire and so that's unrealized soul that can act like that but once you realize once once you put your hand in the fire you have now realized you felt it. Now you know what the fire is. And so that's how this knowledge is also. You feel the knowledge and you realize the knowledge and then it begins to become yours. You, you begin to have that knowledge. You begin to have that power within you. So the first thing is realization. Important, very important. And uh, all these powers are there within, within us, the, we, the soul. Uh, but we are not realized, we are asleep. That's why these powers are all dormant, sleeping state. So we need to awaken them. And to awaken them, we need to have that power of realization. And so what is the way, what is the method to realize uh, the, the knowledge that this is true? And the answer is med meditation. What happens in a, in a very scientific way if I have to explain how the meditation helps you awaken these powers is uh, you take the help of your intellect. Your mind will never accept that I am a peaceful soul because mind wants to run here always. Your heart will not accept that I am a peaceful soul because heart, has also all these anger and all these 
trauma sitting inside. And so the only person who can help is your intellect, your third eye. With little uh, pull, with, with little help from the Supreme also. And so the, with the, your intellect, with your third eye, what you do is uh, you see yourself as a soul with your third eye. And let your heart follow. So knowledge is there. With the knowledge, you can say, okay, let my intellect see myself as that peaceful soul. And just stay there. Don't let the intellect waver from there. And the heart will soon follow that. And let the heart follow that. And once the heart feels it, that becomes automatically a power because it's the feeling of the heart that counts. The one's heart feels, then it becomes a reality. <clears throat> and then the mind follows after the heart, the thoughts start to occur about the soul. That's how it works. And the Supreme Soul's help is very important in that one because uh, you can, if you're a lucky one, uh, and have a close relationship with the Supreme Soul and a very loveful relationship, you will have a very high likelihood of realization of these powers. And so that's a very big power, power of realization. Next thing about that, uh, next thing after that is the, even if I have the knowledge, even when I have realized that I'm a soul, I'm still not powerful, I'm not, still not peaceful. And the reason is the, um, the lack of transformation. I need to transform. So that is, well, I would call it, uh, that, that is called as the power of transformation. I need to transform me from body to soul. That's the first transformation, power of, transformation number one, uh, transformation of my consciousness from body conscious to soul conscious. Um, number two is, uh, yes, I heard uh, there's a comment about through practice and exercise. Yes, that is a next phase after the transformation, yes. So uh, number one, transformation of the soul. Number two, transformation of my relations. Right now I'm a body and I'm connected with this world very deeply. My father, my friends, my brother, sister, children, I'm connected here. My work people, my neighbors connected. So that consciousness I need to shift from my all relations here to my all relations with the Supreme Soul. When that shift happens, then I can really feel that power within me. I can really become a powerful being when these two transformations happen. There are many others, but I just mentioned, want to mention these two. Transformation of the consciousness, number one, and transformation of the relations. Um, because when I transform my consciousness, all the ailments of the body, all the limitations of the body are all out and all the powers of the soul comes in. When I transform my relations, the uh, push and pull from the relation is gone. I'm completely connected with father, one father. And uh, I derive all the, uh, everything that he has becomes mine. So if I become a child of God, everything that belongs to him is now mine. And that is a huge achievement. So attainment comes to that realization, that transformation, transformation of the relation. 
Um, so that's the next. And then comes, how do I, then comes the question, how do I transform, right? And so uh, like uh, the uh, comments say that through practice and experience, that's how I do it. I need to practice daily of being that soul consciousness, being in a soul consciousness and, and uh, I need to um, exercise. And uh, one can classify in the way that uh, you can take, I can take help of, I have now knowledge, I have realized and I have understood the importance of transformation, how I can put into practice. I can take help of the uh, study, daily study and, and receive the knowledge and, and use that. I can take help of the yoga. I can take help of the time. You know, uh, well, if I wake up early morning, it makes a big difference. Then I can, um, I can, uh, Tapa Swadhyay Ishwarya Pranidham. That's right. This is the, these are the, I think the, Tapa Swadhyay Ishwar Prani Dhanami. So these are the these are the three uh, of the I think these are the eight aspects of the yoga that has been described. And so like a yam, niyam, asana, uh, and you know, last of them is samadhi. And so these are there. So yes, so that's how daily study uh, helps us big time and you take help uh, of the uh, waking up morally morning you take help of the uh, following these uh, the guidelines there's uh, spiritual guidelines uh, to to become a soul and uh, the time is 7:45 so i'm going to uh, you know cut it short uh, i wanted to one or two statements uh, mention one or two statements of the uh, the eight powers, and then we will uh, stop, question, answer, then we'll meditate. And so the, the power of the discernment and decision-making. So I, I remember them by groups, discern and decide, and then power to accommodate and cooperate because accommodation then I can cooperate. Power to tolerate and face. When I can tolerate, then I can face. And the power to pack up and withdraw. So that's how I remember. Uh, but discernment, discernment is knowing what is right, what is wrong. And uh, it is a power to know because I have a true perspective of, of the person, of the situation. And when I have a true perspective, I'm not drawn into a wrong direction and use all my energy. I'm doing the right action. So that is a power. And uh, like I said before that each power, each power has associated virtues. So what goes with the power of discernment is uh, the truth, the clarity of the intellect, discipline, um, faith, and there, may, there could be many others. And soul consciousness goes with everything actually. Decision-making, important uh, power because accurate decision-making uh, leads to, uh, you know, a focused action. You're not wasting any energy, you're not wasting time, et cetera. What, requ what is required for decision-making? You require balance. You require knowledge, like judge. Judge has the knowledge, judge has the balance. And one important characteristic of that is he's detached. He cannot remain attached to one party and make a decision, he's detached. So as a detached observer, he can make a uh, judgment or take a, a decision. And then determination and faith. 
So once a decision is made, that's firm, firm determination and faith. It's important. Then how to tolerate. Uh, tolerate is, uh, you know, common, common people understand tolerate as uh, he shouted at me and I did not say anything. Uh, I know that he is a bad guy, but that's not toleration. That's not tolerating at all. If you create an in negativity inside, that's not tolerate, tolerating. Tolerating is there should not be any trace of negativity in your thoughts also. There should be only understanding and love. <clears throat> so that definition we need to know. No irritation should be there, no sulking, nothing. And how, how is the tolerating a power? If somebody is uh, uh, physically or mentally harming me and I'm not saying anything, how is it a power? How can it be a power? Some people would call it as a coward act. But it is a power because number one, I exercise within me of remaining stable. I did not create any negativity in response to the negativity outside. That's one. Second is uh, when I tolerate, I end the conflict. I begin to end the conflict between us. So I did not put more negativity into environment. And I become successful in changing the other person to more calmer state. So that is a power. Can you imagine somebody is angry and you can, with your power to tolerate, you can pacify that person. That power is more than a power of a, a weapon. That's why it's a power. And the power to face is related to the power to tolerate because uh, once you tolerate, that's just the no response, no negative response from me. But power to face is you do something to that negativity that is out there and transform that negativity. And that is a facing. So uh, example, if in that same situation, I uh, radiate love, or healing energy to this person and heal that person. And so the root of the negativity from the opposite side is destroyed. And that is facing. And that requires a lot of strength. And that's why it's a power and it also transforms. So that they are two connected, <clears throat> power to face. Um, and what is needed for that power? First thing, I need courage. I need to stand up to that person. Courage. I need to have self-confidence that I can withstand this negativity and I have the power to change. I need to have faith. I need to have fearlessness. I need to have self-respect. When I'm in, in my self-respect, I can change. No negativity can come, can stand in front of that. And uh, I need to have renunciation of I and my. If I have that ego of me and mine, I will fail, I will, I will lose that power. And I need to have a balance between love and law. That balance I need to have to transform or to face. And then uh, there's a big power, power to accommodate or merge. Uh, two examples I want to give, the ocean and the river. Ocean merges all impurities and, and uh, has a gem in the bottom and it throws away the negativity. So like that ocean, we merge everything, some negativity that is coming from outside, transform into positivity, 
and retain what is good and let go what is not good. Second uh, example is a river. <clears throat> when the river is flowing down uh, from high place, it meanders around any object that comes in the way and then it goes through. It does not stop its progress towards the ocean. Uh, so that um, is, a, is a power and it, it, is, it uh, exercises a flexibility. I exercise my flexibility to accommodate and I still have my goal. I'm not uh, changed by that other soul. And uh, because we are running short, I'm just very quickly go uh, others. Uh, the power to, to cooperate, it goes along with that, uh, the power to uh, accommodate. When I can accommodate, I can cooperate. Cooperate means I operate with you, not for my benefit, not for your benefit, not for our mutual benefit, but for the benefit of the world, okay? With, out of benevolence, I cooperate with you. With you, not the body, with you, the soul. That's very important. Body may ask me to do something and I cooperate. That's wrong. That's not power of cooperation. What the soul needs for the benefit of the body, I cooperate into that. That's a power of cooperation. And then uh, the lastly, uh, oh, there's a big power to pack up and power to withdraw. Pa pack up means this life is a journey and I need to carry uh, a baggage with me. What do I carry in this baggage? Do I carry uh, hatred, anger, jealousy, a past trauma and travel heavy? Or do I not take those things and carry with me only happy moments and go light. So I need to be light when I travel and that's a power to pack up and that requires a, a very uh, exercise and very strong spiritual power to be like that. And power to pack up also means to apply a powerful break. I need to stop my mind within a second when it's needed and, and steer to a right direction. And for that, I need uh, um, a lot of patience, introversions, and many other virtues. And lastly, power to withdraw. And uh, the power to withdraw, one important point I know is a lot of people will think that the withdrawing is a cowardly act. How is it a power? You withdraw, that means you're exercising, uh, you're hiding, you're exercising a cowardly act. But that is not outside withdrawing, withdrawing inside. In the diagram that I showed, where you have a soul and mountains, you withdraw inside through that mountain to your, um, to your true self. So you withdraw inside your mind, you withdraw towards your true uh, nature. That's withdrawing power. That means from body consciousness, you withdraw yourself to a soul conscious stage, close to your soul stage. And that be, that's a very powerful stage where outside negativity will not affect you. And I'm going to stop here because it's three minutes to go before eight. And so, sorry, I took a little longer and uh, we can take some questions. If not, I can, we can meditate. Uh, yes, if someone has questions, you can put it in the chat. Um, and I've been, I've enabled you to unmute yourself. So you, if you have a question, you can ask. Uh, Shashikant Bhai, did you have a question? or comment or insight. This is a time for sharing. Tim, please. Um, thank you, Sister. Uh, Vinavat, 
Uh, yes. Your meditation, are you going to take us through the realization and also the two stage of transformation during your meditation later on? Mm, we'd love to see how you lead us to it. Yeah, that would be the that would be my attempt. Yes. Great. Thank you. And uh, this is the our this is our null our power your power my power this is us, and so we will work together in this one, and we will try to feel that power. And so, yes, that would be my. Any other question? It has been. Yeah. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Uh, uh, this uh, entire journey, I feel like it is a kaivalya what Maharishi Patanjali has described during the yoga meditation, the Harna Jan Samadhi, to reach that four type of different samadhis. So kaivalya is the main one. So we samadhi, nirvij samadhi. So can we connect? To that. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that information. Yes. That's uh, something that you know. I I have attended that session that you had, and I know that you are very knowledgeable in that field. So yes. Thank you, uh, Brother Bernard. That was very good. Uh, very good talk. I appreciate uh, everything you said tonight. So, Om right. Shanti, thank you. Thank you, Om Shanti. All right, so let's all uh, sit and uh, meditate. Yeah, so, about five minutes, we'll go into the stage of uh, soul consciousness and see if we can feel powerful. <clears throat> and so, sit in. Uh, sit with your back straight. Um, relax your shoulders. Relax your face. And try to keep your eyes open or close either way. Open will be better the way it is. And uh, slow down your breathing. Focus to your breathing. And now bring your total attention to the center of the forehead. Let everything else be as it is. The total attention to the center of the forehead. Neglect all the noises outside. and inside. And with the third eye of your intellect, look at your true self, deep under. all the thoughts and emotions and the layers of difference and scars deep down the true self and look at yourself as a bright shining star Alive and real. Pure and peaceful. This is your true self. And this is the one who see and feel 
and who act through this body. And this is the one who is not affected by the outside world, totally pure. That is me, I the soul. The child of the Supreme Soul. And I come from a far away place beyond the moon and the stars. where there is no limitations of time. There is no cycle of up and down, stillness. That is my world. That's where I come from. And I realize I am that powerful soul who has come into this world to play my part. And I come from that very high place where my father, the supreme soul, lives. the almighty ocean of peace. The purifier of the impure. The one with the true knowledge. The remover of the sorrow and bestower of happiness. The unlimited source of all the treasures. My true father, mother, teacher, Satguru, guide, I realize that I belong to him. And with that realization, all his powers and all his treasures become mine. I don't have to now ask for any of the powers or look for for them from outside, their mind. In keeping this awareness, I come just above the globe of the world and staying connected with the Supreme. I radiate the peace, prosperity, and power to the whole world, to all the souls, to all oceans and mountains, to all the present and past beings and to all five elements. 
with total benevolence. As a perfect instrument with no desire to take, I myself become more powerful the more I give. And I transform the world into a beautiful place. A clean and pure air. Pure water. Lush green vegetations. Happy animals and loving souls in their beautiful bodies. I create that world. And keeping the memory of that beautiful world in me, I come to the place of my action to the center of my forehead. I'm looking out through these eyes to the world outside. Om Shanti.